Let's talk about polarity of bonds. Now, we do have a table. It came from Linus Pauling. It's an electronegativity table. This is from Wikipedia. You can look up any um, electronegativity table. This is what you'll notice. Um, it shows the trend very clearly for electronegativity. Fluorine is going to have the greatest electronegativity and cesium is going to have the smallest electronegativity. So electronegativity, again, is the ability of an atom in a compound to attract an electron to itself. So we want to look at individual bonds, a bond between two atoms and identify, is it polar or nonpolar? You'll recall polar means um, that the two atoms do not share the electrons equally. So um, I have a hydrogen, let's review this really quick, with one electron and a hydrogen with one electron, and those two electrons will come together and share to form a bond, a force that holds atoms together. It's a sharing of electrons. Um, now, a nonpolar molecule, those two electrons, they'll spend about equal amount of time next to each atom. A polar molecule, here for example, means that one of the atoms hogs. It pulls the electron toward its side and the electron that's shared from atom A spends more time next to atom B. And that creates an electron density where there's electrons on one side of the atom of the molecule more often than the other one, creating a partial negative and a partial positive side. Um, so how to calculate this? We do have um, a rule of thumb, uh, a table provided by electronegativity. You can also look this up for electronegativity difference. Uh, some tables might be slightly different. I think this is pretty mainstream and accepted right here. Um, if the difference between two atoms, the difference in their electronegativity um, is greater than 1.7, it's called mostly ionic. If it's between 0.4 and 1.7, it's classified as polar covalent. If the difference is less than 0.4, it's mostly covalent. And if it's zero, it means that it's nonpolar covalent, which means it shares perfectly, that the electrons that are shared in the bond spend equal amount of time um, next to both atoms. So there's no negative, there's no partial negative, no partial positive on that. Um, so how we do this is really just simple math. And I'm going to do uh, these four examples for you. Uh, so if we have a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. I'm going to take the electronegativity difference. So I'm going to put delta En, so that's just a change in the electronegativity, is going to be um, simply taking the numbers for each atom and subtracting them. And I'll do it as absolute value. So I'm going to have hydrogen is 2.20 minus hydrogen 2.20, and check it out, zero. So this would be a nonpolar covalent bond. So right here, I put nonpolar covalent bond. And again, what does that mean? It means that those two electrons shared um, in between hydrogen and hydrogen spend equal amount of time next to each atom, so there's no charge, no partial charges on this. And there's a really important takeaway here. Um, any uh, diatomic element, so when you have the same element sharing with um, itself, another um, identical element, it will always be an electronegativity difference of zero because they have the same electronegativities. I could take fluorine, the most electronegative um, uh, element, put it as F2, that's a nonpolar molecule because 3.98 minus 3.98 is zero. It's going to share equally with itself because they each have the same electronegativity. Okay, let's do another one, carbon hydrogen. So this is our backbone for life. Let's look and see what these come out to be. So carbon, oops, carbon hydrogen bond, sorry about that. Um, our carbon right here, so electronegativity difference, change in electronegativity is going to be 2.55 minus hydrogen, which is 2.20, and that'll give you 0.35. So the difference is 0.35. Come over here, it's less than 0.4, so I'd say mostly covalent. Now, little rule of thumb. For all intent and purpose, we say that a carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar. But you can see right here, it's a 0.35. Okay, another honest truth. You've been taught this hard, fast rule that when you have a metal with a nonmetal, that's an ionic bond. When you have a nonmetal and a nonmetal, that's a covalent bond. In reality, every single bond has just a little bit of ionic and just a little bit of covalent. And then there's this whole gradient in between of, yeah, a lot of ionic, barely covalent, a lot of covalent, barely ionic, and then the middle part. Um, keep the rule of thumb in your mind, metal, 
non-metal ionic, non-metal, non-metal covalent. Um, but if you're asked to use this table, um, the Linus Pauling electronegativity table with this classification, know that you might write down something like for carbon hydrogen, you'd write down mostly covalent, even though you know in practice we say that's going to be nonpolar. So a little bit of honesty there for you. <laughs> so if you have to use a table, just take the word from the classification, good to go. All right, let's do two more. Let's take a hydrogen with a fluorine atom. So is this bond polar or nonpolar? How do we classify it? So the change in electronegativity, you're going to take the hydrogen, 2.20, minus the fluorine, 3.98. We're going to get 1.78. So I come over here, greater than 1.7, mostly ionic. And I chose this one on purpose. Okay, non-metal, non-metal. We would say, oh, it's a covalent compound, but fluorine, hugely electronegative, um, huge electronegativity. Um, this is going to be a polar molecule. Well, it's so polar that it's classified as mostly ionic. So again, if your teacher wants you to use this table, you just write down mostly ionic, mostly ionic on that. Now, if you didn't have the table, you'd say, oh, we're sharing electrons, hydrogen and fluorine, non-metal, non-metal. This is going to be a covalent compound, but I know fluorine is really electronegative. We call it polar. Uh, but with this table, I know it's going to feel awkward. You write down mostly ionic, mostly ionic. Okay, um, let's do carbon nitrogen. Um, so change in electronegativity. I'm going to look up the carbon is 2.55 minus the nitrogen 3.04 and we are going to get 0.49. Did I do that right? Four, five, yeah, 0.49. Um, so I look at my little table between 0.49 and 1.7, that would be polar covalent. Um, that those, um, those are not going to share equally based on uh, this number that I have here, that it's polar covalent. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you is how to read a Linus Pauling electronegativity chart and then how to use a classification table. Really easy, take your two atoms in the bond, subtract it, look at the classification. Now, most of what you do, you're not going to be given a Linus Pauling chart. Um, and you're not going to be given this classification table either. And you're going to have to say, is something polar or nonpolar? So I wanna talk about the rule of thumb, okay? How you can look at the periodic table and come up with, is that bond between two atoms, is it polar or nonpolar? Here's your rule of thumb. If the two atoms are next to each other, their electronegativities are going to be so similar that we say they are nonpolar, that they will, for the most part, share equally. Now, if there is at least one element in between the two elements you're looking at that are in the bond, their electronegativity um, differences are going to be great enough that they won't share equally. And whichever element is closest to fluorine, that's the one that will attract the electron, hog that electron, and cause the partial negative. So let's, um, let's do that with those same, um, those same uh, bonds that we had done before. Hydrogen, hydrogen. Oh, it's the same element. Um, hydrogen and hydrogen, I know they have identical electronegativities. That's going to be nonpolar. Nonpolar. Now, carbon hydrogen. This one, I want you to have memorized just as our rule of thumb. We automatically say is nonpolar. That those share equally. There's no partial negative, no partial positive. So that one just have memorized. Now, let's do the hydrogen fluorine. Okay, huge difference between the hydrogen and the fluorine, I'd say definitely a polar bond. It's going to be a polar bond. Um, now, if I do the carbon nitrogen, and I was also very purposeful in choosing this, carbon nitrogen, those are right next to each other. So just looking at this really quick, I would say because they're next to each other, they are nonpolar. Their electronegativities will be similar enough that they're nonpolar. Now, if I switch this up, if I do a carbon oxygen, so here's carbon, here's oxygen, we skip the nitrogen, then I would say that's polar. Those electronegativities are going to be different enough that it'll make a polar molecule. Now, where am I going to write the partial positive and partial negative? I just asked myself, 
which element is more electronegative? It's the oxygen. It has a greater effective nuclear charge. It's closer to that fluorine, greater electronegativity. And so we're going to have the partial negative on the most electronegative atom, oxygen. By default, carbon is going to be your partial positive. Um, let's see, same thing on the fluorine up here. Partial negative, it's more electronegative than the hydrogen, that's your partial positive. So again, what does that mean? It means the electron shared from hydrogen spends more time on the side of the fluorine, giving this a density of more electrons than the hydrogen over here. So you get your partial negative, partial positive. It's like a baby magnet. Not full positive and negative charges, but there is some, some um, polarity difference, some charge difference, so that could slightly conduct. I wanna do one more with you. Let's go, um, if we're going up and down the, um, the group. So if I have a fluorine and a bromine, fluorine and a bromine bond, notice there is one element in between, chlorine. And so I say, oh, there's going to be enough of an electronegativity difference that that would be a polar bond. And then I just say, okay, which one's more polar? Obviously fluorine. Uh, smaller Coulomb's law, greater ability to attract electrons. So this would be your partial negative, and the bromine by default would be the partial positive. Now if we changed it, and I had a fluorine with a chlorine bond, they're right next to each other. So what's it going to be, polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. Because they're close enough in electronegativities that I would say that difference is small, is going to share pretty equally, I call it nonpolar. Um, so no partial negative or positive on that. So, big rule of thumb, if there's at least one element between the two atoms that you are looking at for your bond, call it a polar molecule. That's how to determine polarity if you only have a periodic table and you don't have the Linus Pauling chart to actually do it mathematically. If you do it mathematically, use a classification table and just wherever it falls, give it the name um, from that classification. Um, last little rule of thumb, remember carbon hydrogen we say is a nonpolar bond. Okay, very good, bond polarity. Have a great day, thanks. Oh, and if you need help, check out molecular polarity, and I also have some more practice um, just on uh, polar molecules and looking at, at the polar bonds. Thanks so much, bye.